Hi, this is Jay Addison from Crypto Biz Magazine. We are live in Las Vegas at Inside Bitcoins with Valerian Bennett, the founder of the Protocol.tv. Tell us about the Protocol.tv. Excellent. Well, I live and work in Los Angeles as a uh, film and video producer. And uh, as I got into Bitcoin, it took me, uh, I think like most people, a little while to, to sort of wrap my head around it. And I thought to myself that, you know, if everyday average people have to spend this much time to kind of understand everything that goes on with it, you know, this is never going to work. But I, I really felt like this technology is, is so important and so uh, massive and, and potentially has the capacity to change so many things in our society. I thought, well, I'm not a programmer. I'm not a technical person, but I'm a storyteller. That's what I do for, for a living. So I figured if I could start to go around and tell stories about regular people using this technology to solve real problems, um, then I would hope that other people can kind of uh, intuitively learn about everything that's going on and, and that would be a good avenue in for, uh, for a lot of people. That's fantastic. Now, even with the great need for Bitcoin in places like Argentina, do you think Bitcoin is still too technical for the average person? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's a real that's, easy answer, right? Yeah, it is. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really early in the, in the life cycle of things. I think uh, maybe last year everyone got a little too uh, excited with the, the price run up. Um, you know, everyone kind of quotes this price. We were at, you know, 1200, 1100, something like that. But if you really look back at it, considering all the, um, the, the black hole that Mt. Gox was at the time, were we really at 1200? So right. it's a question of, um, you know, kind of slowing things down, letting some of the air and some of the steam and some of the, the hype sort of uh, fade out. We'll, you know, at some point find what quote unquote normal is. Um, but even so, as, as all that's going on, you're seeing uh, a lot of things being built. You're seeing a lot of uh, the infrastructure, um, the railroads, if you will, the actual things that are going to, to move everything along. Uh, that energy hasn't stopped. And in fact, uh, I think we just heard uh, recently with the, the blockchain, um, uh, blockchain.info, uh, they just got, what, like a $30 million oh, yes. investment. So Incredible. the really, really smart people with a lot of money are not slowing down on this at all. The you're price right. may go up, the price may go down. So it may take a little while, but uh, if you're in it for the long haul, I think this is a really exciting time. It sure is. So do you, you must have more plans on creating more Bitcoin content in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what uh, we hope the protocol uh, TV ultimately will, will grow into this. Uh, the short documentary that we did, uh, Bitcoin Buenos Aires. So that's uh, kind of what we're considering a, a feature presentation where it's easily digestible. It's something that we hope we can do things like that every few months. Um, different uh, Bitcoin hotspots around the world and, and tell uh, the story of, of the people who are using Bitcoin in real life. Um, at the same time, we also want to have more uh, consistent content. So we've done uh, a lot of interviews with uh, some notables in the industry. For example, uh, at this conference, we had uh, a good sit down with Patrick Byrne from Overstock, uh, Bobby Lee from BTC China, and hopefully we'll start to be able to output those kinds of things uh, on a weekly basis. And ultimately, if we're if we're taking it to the, the next level, we'll have uh, daily content where it's a more short form informational news content where it's very bite sized, something you can put on your podcast, listen to for three minutes in the morning, get the basic idea of what's going on and then go about your day. So that's our uh, short, medium and, and long term plans for, for new content. That's cool. Now, how do you, uh, what do you feel the best way for artists to monetize their content with Bitcoin is? Well, with, uh, with Bitcoin Buenos Aires, we, we looked at it as an experiment in a lot of different ways. So we tried a lot of different monetization techniques just to see what's working, what's not working. Um, we initially started with uh, a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, people could uh, join us by paying with their credit card PayPal, or of course they could uh, join by paying in Bitcoin. And a lot of people chose to uh, get rewards for that. But at the same time, we also opened it up that people could anonymously contribute um, to, to our campaign. And a lot of people did that. Um, we ultimately put uh, the finished product on uh, our website, theprotocol.tv, and we gave people the option to pay $2 in Bitcoin, uh, pay $3 if they wanted to use credit card or PayPal, just to prove a point about good one, third party processing. Like uh, but we also did a, a name your own price and put it on BitTorrent with the reality is something like this, it's going to be on BitTorrent anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so we right. took the initiative to try to uh, include our QR code, make sure that uh, all the metadata, everything that we could do to create an avenue for people who could watch it and then pay whatever it is that they wanted to pay. And ultimately what we're finding so far is that the average contribution from people who are paying their, choosing their own price is actually higher than the for sale price. So 
Well, I'm curious to see if that's going to be the same with the next thing that we do or if this is a one-off or if it's just a matter of excitement. But ultimately, I don't think anyone really knows what's going to work. That's why we're trying as many different things as possible. But the important thing is that we're trying to make use of the technology to allow us to do things that just weren't possible before. That makes sense. I mean, the fact that you can do uh, micro payments as an example, right? Yeah, so and you know, we had uh, we had a bunch of uh, meetups. Uh, one, one which one you attended. One we you were fantastic. Uh, uh, at different places around the world, we're up to thirty cities right now around the world, and uh, just the idea of people watching it and someone sending you a couple of dollars, two dollars, three, and you can, you know, of course, it's all on the blockchain, so you can kind of see it happening in, mm -hmm. in real time and get a sense of uh, of the feedback that you're that you're getting. So. We're just trying to find as, as many different ways to use the technology to help uh, create a base for us to continue to create new content. Very cool. The documentary was shorter than a lot of people expected. Is there plans for a longer version, or are you moving to, on to other things other than that documentary? Uh, there's there's two ways that we're, we're going about it. One, which is we wanted to try this format um, just because it's, um, it's shorter and you can turn it around quicker. Um, I think one of the, um, the pitfalls that I wanted to avoid that I think uh, you've seen in a couple of different projects around the, the community that are great projects, but they just take so long to produce that by the time they're out, it's, the whole universe has changed yes, 10 times over. So this was something we shot um, uh, first week of July. Uh, we had our, our first uh, screening, kind of a test screening at Cryptolina, uh, which was a Bitcoin conference in Raleigh. That was about six weeks later. Um, we did a couple of weeks of tweaks and edits, and then basically within two months, um, we had it out to out to the public. So, I think it's a, it's important to um, to tell these stories in a way that when you see them, they still make sense. That there's still an excitement about them. That they're still fresh. Hopefully, as we get into um, I guess longer form content, that we'll be able to have the resources to make something bigger, but make it still make it fast enough that. It still feels relevant by the time it, it gets out. I know out. what you mean. This industry moves so fast yeah. that it's 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 unlike any other industry, right? I mean, you you try and produce content, and and you know, as you just mentioned, I mean, everything changes so quickly. It's it's hard to you produce a one hour video, and and everything's out of date by the time you're finished editing. Kind of right. Thing. And there's uh, the the next project that we're working on, this next sort of feature project that we're working on, exactly the same thing, where it's like we interviewed uh, these two people who were part of the company, yeah. and by the time we start editing it, they've changed the company name, they've changed the focus of the company. It's just things move so fast, and it's that's the excitement, but as a filmmaker, that's also a, a challenge that the you have to deal with. Part, yeah. Yeah. So you founded TheProtocol.tv. What's your long-term hopes for the project? Well, we called it TheProtocol.tv because... I think obviously everyone's concerned about right now Bitcoin because that's just the most popular thing. Everyone's concerned about the currency because that's the thing that has the most sizzle. Um, but ultimately, there's a much bigger picture, a much broader picture, uh, and it's about the using protocol. the protocol. Right. So whatever that's going to turn into, whether that's um, the decentralized storage, it's the Bitcoin 2.0, it's you know so many other things that people are starting to uh, open bazaar and swarm. And as we saw with... Uh, with Patrick Byrne and Overstock, uh, this whole decentralized uh, crypto mm -hmm. equity. Um, there's so many things that if it if it doesn't work, it's not going to work. Just none, none of it's going to work. But that's if it right. does work, it's going to change everything. So that's why we try to keep it broad and, and make that our focus. You know, what you're doing is very exciting, that's for sure. Let me ask you a question. January sure. 1st, 2015, what do you think the price of Bitcoin is uh, uh, going to be? See, I've answered this question <laughs> once, like two weeks ago, and I'm already wildly off. So I, I, we've, I didn't, got, we've got guesses that are all over the place. So <laughs> right. feel comfortable. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I thought ah, 350. It's never going to go below 350. On the drive here from Los Angeles, <laughs> just saw it run through that and just barrel south from there. Um, you know, as I've as I've actually listened to a lot of the presentations here uh, with uh, some of the different downward pressures on on Bitcoin on the price in terms of mining and just really the industrial um, uh, the phenomenon of industrial mining where Basically, it's a simple cash flow business. Mine, sell, that's yeah, it. Yeah. So until that dynamic changes, it seems like there's going to be just a, a, a basic downward pressure. Too so much dilution every day. It, and, and then you add into we're getting into the end of the year, and there's generally yes. that selling pressure. People sort of have their minds go into the holidays. And um, I don't know other than, I mean, we've had PayPal come aboard. Um, we've had this uh, announcement from Overstock. So... 
I'm not sure how much more good news is. Yes, yeah, Square is out just there. came on board, right? Yeah, and so, it doesn't really seem to be changing too yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, so. the, the PayPal gave us a little bit of a blip, but that was it. Yeah, you know, and then right back down the next couple of days. So, giving you a number. I was trying to avoid answering the question, but you're actually going to make me answer it. Um, I could see around 200, maybe even sub 200 from from there into the beginning of the year, and, and wow. see what happens in 2015. Incredible. Valerian Bennett, founder of theprotocol.tv, thanks kindly for joining us today. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Thank Appreciate you. it. This is Jay Addison from Crypto Biz Magazine, live from Meckler Media's Inside Bitcoins Conference in Las Vegas. Remember to subscribe to Crypto Biz Magazine at CryptoBizMag.com. Follow us on Twitter at CryptoBizMag. Thanks for joining us and learn more at CryptoBizMagazine.com.